Hello, I'm Brett Rowley. And I'm Allison Wu. Passive freezers are an up-and-coming technology that use soda bottles, recycled styrofoam, and the natural insulating properties of the earth to keep food frozen during the summer. It uses no power and no recycled materials, so it is an appealing way to reduce WAD's environmental impact. We wanted to see if this technology and its benefits could be applied to make a hybrid air conditioner. Our air conditioner would use power to circulate air through a matrix of two liter frozen soda bottles. But the air would be cooled by the natural heat exchange with the matrix. The system is buried in the ground and insulated by one foot of styrofoam. The goal of the project was to determine how many bottles would be needed to keep the air coming out of the matrix under 25 degrees Celsius for a summer period, approximately 120 days. From this, we developed a differential equation modeling the heat flow. The first term represents heat flow from the ground through the styrofoam and into the bottles. The second term represents heat flow from the air into the bottles as the air passes through the matrix. The delta T is referred to the difference in temperature between the ground or air and the matrix. Ground and air temperatures were represented by a sine curve with ground being equal to air temperature plus a one month offset. By solving this equation, we can determine how much heat is added to the ice over time and also how much heat is lost by the air as it passes through the matrix. From this, we can use the second equation to determine temperature change for the matrix and the air. This graph validates our model by showing how the temperature of a 2x2 two two matrix changes over time without any air circulation. Effectively, it suggests that a 29 kilogram block of ice in a one foot thick styrofoam box buried sufficiently deep in the ground as to experience no daily temperature fluctuation would remain frozen in a Vermont-like climate for about two months. Vermont residents told us that this seemed a reasonable conclusion. Additionally, once we changed our model to include air circulation, we did a back of the envelope calculation to compare the heat lost by the air as it passes through the matrix to heat gained by the ice. Theoretically, they would be on the same order of magnitude, with any differences being reasonably attributable to heat coming from the ground. Thankfully, our calculations show that this was indeed the case, further verifying the behavior of our model. Our first experiment was to vary the length of the matrix. We found that this had very little impact on how long the ice remained frozen and had practically no effect on output air temperature. This makes sense because the surface area of the box, which limits how much heat can be absorbed from the ground, and the volume of ice, which limits how much heat the ice can absorb before melting, are both directly proportional to the length of the matrix. Therefore, an increase in one leads to an increase in the other in an equal fashion. In other words, a longer matrix has more ice but will absorb more heat. Therefore, a very short box is as effective as a very long box but more economical. Our second experiment was to vary the size of the matrix itself. This had a greater effect on the temperature of the ice with a larger matrix being approximately 10 days longer at staying frozen. Interestingly, air temperature still appeared to remain constant. Closer analysis showed that air temperature did change for different matrix sizes, but only on the order of about 0 0.001 degrees Celsius. We believe that this is because of a limiting factor on how quickly heat can diffuse through the ice matrix. A larger matrix does have more ice, but each additional bottle is farther away from the air channel. Therefore, while a larger matrix may be cooler at a given time, the temperature of the air of the temperature of the bottles closest to the air channel itself is about the same. These results interestingly suggest that the temperature of air coming out of the matrix is actually fairly unresponsive to change of matrix size and length. With that fact in mind, we used a 6 by 6 1 meter long box, which is 108 bottles, to see what climate the system could be reasonably expected to function in. Our experiments were initially conducted with a climate model based on weather data from Arizona. This was done to stress test the system and accentuate any differences between performance of matrix sizes. We also developed a climate model for weather data from Vermont and a climate model with intermediate values. This graph shows that in order for air temperature to remain below 25 degrees Celsius, the climate needs to be approximately that of Vermont. While this is good news in that it shows our idea for a hybrid air conditioner does work, it is unfortunate that it suggests that it is not a viable solution for the climates that would reap the greatest benefit.
With that said, it is important to point out that there are potential inaccuracies due to the fact that the model is a simplification of what is actually a difficult multivariable differential equation. In future work, we would like to pay closer attention to the modeling of heat flow within the matrix itself, in addition to the complexities of heat convection between the air and the ice in the, in the channel.